All right, so in this video, I'm going to continue uh, building out our UNO card game. Uh, in the last video, I walked you through how to set up a build deck function that returned a list of a deck of with all 108 cards. Um, and then I also walked you through making a simple shuffle deck function uh, that doesn't rely on random.shuffle um, because we need to make our own algorithm for that. Why not? Uh, and then we got to the point where we were just about ready to start playing the game. So uh, let's move on from there. Okay. So if we were to play an actual Uno game, uh, we would take our deck out of the box. We would shuffle it. What's the next step? Well, we'd want to deal the cards out. And so um, we need to have a function that deals cards. And when you before you do this, you want to be you want to start thinking, all right, how could I make this function the most general purpose I can? Because if we make a function that was only used at the beginning of the game, that where it allowed the user to draw um, the five cards or whatever number of cards you normally start Uno with um, at the beginning of the game, then later on, remember, part of the game is drawing extra cards. And so then you'd end up making another function for that. But I'm thinking, why not we make one general function that we can use for both? Okay, so uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's make uh, a draw card function. All right. And it draws a specified number of cards off the top of the deck. Okay. So parameters, um, I'm going to call it num cards, and that should be an integer. Uh, return values is going to be, uh, let's say cards drawn, and that's going to be a list. Because what I'm thinking is that uh, I'm going to make this function where it's going to take that it's going to first create an empty list and and then add to that list all of the cards, the number of cards off the top of the deck based on how many you need. And then we're going to return that list. OK, um, so I'm going to call it draw cards, num cards. And uh, so I'm going to make a list here, an empty list, cards drawn. And now this is where I can do a for loop for x in range num cards. And that way we can use this function for the five cards drawn at the beginning of the game. We can use this function for drawing four cards if someone puts a pick up four or a draw two cards if someone says pick up two, um, any of those, even um, if they just need to draw one card. It should still work. Okay, so in here, I'm going to append to the cards drawn list uh, from deck. And since uh, actually we want Uno deck, don't we? Uno deck, because that's going to be that should be defined outside and we should be able to grab those zero. Now I could do it this way, but I actually want to do a pop. And the reason why I want to do a pop is because then that will remove the card from the top of the Uno deck. But pop also has the added um, property where it returns that value, meaning that we can then use that return value to append it into cards drawn. So two, killing, sh shooting two birds with one stone. There we go. And now after that for loop is done, we can return cards drawn. So that should be a list of those number of cards that we've drawn. Now that we've done that, now we should be able to draw the initial cards at the bottom. So let's go player one. We're going to um, set this up right now just for a two player game. Okay. So player one equals draw cards five. Player two equals draw cards five. Okay. If we were to do this for more players, like three or four, 
then uh, in that case, I'd recommend that we use a 2D list, a single 2D list to store all of our players. Um, in fact, maybe we should do that because then it would be a little bit more general purpose. So in that case, if we did players equals an empty list, then what we would do is in, rather than um, Yeah, so then what we could do is ask, we could actually ask the user how many players, all right? So let's go num players equals an integer input how many players. And then we can do a for loop for a player in range num players uh, players dot append draw cards five. So if we do two, then this should run twice and append a new list of five cards into players. If they type three, then it should do it three times. So we should have three lists in there of five cards. Let's uh, let's check that out. So if we print players. Now, how many players? Let's start with two. So we've got our list and we've got an, another list inside there of five cards and a second list of five cards. And then the program stops. Let's try that again. How many players? Let's go four. So we've got one, two, three, Four. Beautiful. So that should work. The one thing we need to keep track of is that player one, to reference player one, we actually want index zero. So don't forget that because every list starts at index zero. Now, what do we do? Now we should decide whose turn it is first. May as well just start with player one. Okay. And so um, I would make a variable to track which player's turn it is, and which direction we're going. Because remember, with Uno, it can go in one direction or the other based on the reverse, if somebody plays a reverse card. So I'm going to go player's turn, um, and let's, well, maybe we'll use zero to reference player one. And then um, play direction. And I'm going to make play direction either be a positive one or a negative one. Because I'm thinking that's one of the easiest ways to flip direction. If they play a reverse card, all we would have to do is multiply it by negative one to reverse that direction. If it's positive one, that becomes negative one. If it's negative one, then multiply that by negative one, it becomes a positive one, etc. Okay. Um, now, I'm thinking as we go, when it's, when it's your players, when it's your turn, one thing that you're going to need to be able to do is, is to be able to see what are the cards you have, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that. Let's play our, let's, let's, um, um, let's make a function to show your hand. So. Let's make a show hand function. Uh, print formatted list of players hand. And for a parameter, um, let's put player, and that is going to be a list. That's going to be their hand. Okay. Um, and return value. Uh, none. All we're going to do is uh, print their list. Okay. And so first, let's print. I'd be nice if we um, had it print out their uh, either their name or their number, something like that. 
Um, and as I'm thinking about this, what might actually be easier than just a 2D list, uh, it might be, I think it's even better if we make it so that it is a dictionary. <laughs> no, let's just leave it. Uh, let's call it player and player hand. So let's just add in here, player is actually an integer and player hand, that's gonna be the list. You can see as you go, there's so many different just choices and ways in which you can do this. Um, player dot format player. <clears throat> Um, so maybe I'll do plus one. That way I just pass in the index and, uh, and then it prints that plus one because everybody with their playing the game would understand it to actually be player one. So now, um, let's print your hand and let's print a bunch of lines, I'm thinking, just to make it a little nicer. Um, and now for card in player hand, print card. And now let's just uh, print, uh, do an extra print just to add a separator line. Okay. All right. So now we've got a show hand function so we can, they can see their hand, okay? Um, so now while, let's see. We wanna play as long as uh, each of the player's hands is greater than zero. So we want this while loop to be um, to to do this as long as all of them are greater than zero. I'm thinking what will be easier than trying to uh, check all of the lengths of each of these because we don't know how many players at this point. Um, I think it's best if um, we make a boolean, and then inside of our while loop, we're going to do a check near the bottom after um, each player's turn, where if we check if they're, they have no more cards, then we can change playing to false, in which case it's the end of the game, okay? Um, so while playing, now we're gonna start with player one, yeah? So let's, uh, let's show hand player turn and we can do players player turn see that how we can use that one that one variable in two places that's nice so then we pass that in to show hand that's going to be zero which means we're going to it'll print player one because we're adding one to it and then players zero is going to be the first player's hand, right? And so then um, it, it's going to go. And as long as the number of players was greater than zero, as long as he was at least two, one or two, I mean, it doesn't make sense for him to play it by himself, uh, then we should be good, okay? Maybe it would make sense here to do a while loop to make sure they're at least putting a two, yeah? So while num players is uh, less than two, or num players is greater than, let's say four, it gets kind of unwieldy for uh, to ask to have them do more more than that. invalid please enter a number between two 
four. There we go. Okay, so now we show our hand, and now we want to um, have them pick which card they want to play. All right, so either they have a card or they don't. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to have a card, a discard pile, right? Because we want to see, we need to be able to see what's on the top of that discard pile, right? So um, let's make a list to represent our discard pile. So let's go discards and we're going to do an empty list. And now maybe around here, let's go discards dot append uh, uno deck dot pop zero. So now we've got um, that print um, card on top of discard pile. And I'm going to play, I'm going to have it uh, print the last card added. So I'm going to use negative one. I could just put a zero here, but I'm thinking that eventually, every time, we're going to be appending additional cards into that list. And so I always want to show the last card added. Okay, does that make sense? So now that I'm showing the card on top of the discard pile, the we are showing the user's hand, then um, they need to be able to decide if they want to play a card or if they have to pick up. But normally, if you've ever played a game of Uno, um, you don't really have a choice. If you can play, you have to. If you can't play, you, uh, you, you don't have either a card that matches the number or a card that matches the color, then um, then we, it's going to, uh, you have to pick up. So we need some way of determining whether they, uh, they can play or not. So we need another function. And let's pass into that either let's pass in so um, let's call it can play and let's pass in discard card and player hand so this function is going to check whether a player is able to play a card or not. Parameters, discard card. So that will be a string. And player hand is going to be a list. Return. Um, and I'm going to return a Boolean. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. So this can play is, should either be a true, true or false, okay? So now when we look at our cards, if we look down here, there's a color and then a number, right? Um, and don't forget there's also such things as wild. Now if it's a wild, if the f then we know they can play no matter what, right? Um, so I think it makes sense to have that as a first condition, all right? Where we can um, we can go through, and if they have a wild, then we return true right away. Um, but also, we also need to be able to check if we, um, whether there is a color or a matching number. So, and it can be either or. I think what we need to do maybe first is actually take the card 
and we need to do a split. We need to check, split, separate out the color from the number, the value. Okay, so let's take that discard card and I'm going to make color equal to and color, let's go and value. Mm. We want to do a split. So let's go split card is equal to discard card dot split and it's going to be negative one which means it should grab just well that's actually going to go from the end isn't it so I want to go from the beginning now just to be sure let's just look up what the uh, syntax of a, of split is. So there are there are two possible parameters: the separator and the max split. How many splits to do? So negative one would be all occurrences, but I think I only want to split the first one. So I'm only going to do one. And what this does, what does it return? It splits it and returns it into a list. So split card is going to be a list. So I'm going to make color equal to split card zero. And the card value is equal to split card one. All right. There is a possible error here, though, because when I split it, what if it's a wild? If it's a wild, this is this split isn't going to return anything. There's going to there's just going to be a single value, right? Um, and so right there, I want to check if. Uh, discard card is equal to wild then well they can't very well play anything can they because when somebody plays a wild they say what the color should be but the color the number can be anything So maybe I'm um, maybe what we need to do is actually put in pass into this color and number. I'm getting ahead of myself. Or maybe rather than number, just value, because it may not be a number. And this will be a string. All right. So if I don't split it inside here, I'm going to have to split it outside. But I'll do that later. What we want to do is we need to um, have color and value and player hand. So if I account for just a normal card, then this can be a lot simpler, where um, for card in player hand, um, here I'm going to do a split card equals card dot split with the space, just the split the first part. And if the length of split card, let's actually check if it's a wild. If split card 
if wild in split card zero, then return true. Because we know if they've got a wild, they can play no matter what. Else, um, Elif color maybe I'm miss I'm, I'm thinking about this a little bit too hard because Python has the ability to check if a string is inside of another string we don't actually have to do um, this splitting that I'm talking about we can just check if the card happens to be wild then we can return true. If color in card return true, or we could even do it all in one, in one thing, or value in card return true. And if we've gone through the whole hand and we haven't returned true, then we return false. That actually really simplifies it down, doesn't it? Hopefully it's not too frustrating listening to my thought process, but hopefully it's uh, it's helpful to think to to see that you know there's so many different ways to approach things. Don't just jump into the first way you do it. That's the that's true of all innovation. As you go and you're building, and you're finding oh you know what but I this that makes this complicated that makes this complicated. Just keep thinking about it. Eventually, a better solution will usually present itself. So now I should be able to, so I'm gonna, what I do need now though, is to pass in color and value. So, Let's, let's call it current color. So current color, maybe I should have this outside my Wayne while loop. Um, so this should be equal to um, the, the color of the card that's on top of the deck. So this is where I'm going to split my card. So let's go split card is equal to discards uh, zero dot split with a space one the color should be the first value if current color is not equal to wild card val is equal to split card one. All right. Else card val is equal to any. So I think because this there is some cases where they can play any color any card any color but a specific number or any uh, number but any card then uh, we might have to account for that somehow but let's just we might have to troubleshoot that as we go so There we go. So we've got current color, we've got a card val. And now if can play, 
and let's pass in so we need color so we're going to pass in current color we need value so we're going to pass in card val and then we're going to pass in the player's hand so we're going to pass in players player turn so if that's true then um i think we should now ask which card do you want to play chosen equals input which card do you want to play and to make things easier let's make it an integer and let's change our show hand function so that in front of each card it actually shows us a number so i'm going to make a variable y equal to one and I'm going to do this Y card. There we go. So Y plus equals one. So that way one will be the first card and then it will print out a two because we're increasing our y every time with a bracket and the number of the card. And so once they choose a card, um, well, if let's say they may end up play, um, picking a card that they're not actually allowed to play, but uh, so we might need to double check. So if they pick card chosen, then uh, you know what we can do? We can probably just verify that um, the, the card they passed in works by passing in a list of just the one card that they tried to play. We can probably do that. So let's go while can not can play. So while it's false, while this returns false, and let's pass in current color card val and a list of players player turn and then um the card they chose so card chosen minus one turning that into an integer that might look a little bit confusing here but let's just follow that through so i'm passing in um in players oops i'm grabbing their card their hand here and then here i'm grabbing the specific card that they chose but I have to do a minus one because what they see is the numbers one through to the whatever number of card they have in their hand. So if they pick the first card, that they would enter a one, but that actually refers to index zero, the first card in their hand. And to refer to um, a value in a 2D list, we need to separate each one by square braces like this. The reason I've got these extra set of braces is because can play is looking for a list. So this, what's inside this bit is actually returning a string. And so I'm putting that inside of a list, which will then be allowed, be allowed because can play expects us a list, not a string. Okay. So while that's not true, meaning it's false, then I'm going to ask them again, not a valid card, which card do you want to play? So then, assuming that they've been able to play that card, let's append to discards players, player turn, 
card chosen minus one. And rather than actually the square braces, let's do the same thing we did with drawing where we're going to pop, which means it's going to remove that card from the player's hand as well. Beautiful. Else, meaning they can't play. This is an else to this can play. They can't play. Then um, let's print. You can't play. You have to draw a card. And let's players. Let's. Uh, how did we draw a card again? We appended draw cards. There we go. So we're going to do. Players, player turn, dot append, draw cards, one. Now there's one problem here, and that's that draw cards returns a list. And so rather than appending, because if I append, then I'm not I'm gonna be appending another list into a list. We don't want that. So instead, I think what we want is to do a merge. So let's go back here and let's just remind ourselves with Python, how do we do a merge of lists? We can simply do a plus. Easy. So in that case, we've got that player's turn. Now, let's make that equal to player's player's turn plus the list of draw cards. You could append each one. I don't like that. Extend. Now that, that looks even easier. So rather than this, let's instead of append, let's do extend. Draw cards one. That's perfect. All right. There we go. Finally, after they've done that turn, what do we want to do? We want to increase player turn by play direction. And let them go. Now, you might be thinking, well, it's not the other person's turn yet. What if they played uh, draw a card. What if they played a reverse? We need to apply those properties. And so we do need to do that. Before um, I go though, I'm, I'm going to show that in the next in the next video. Let's check to see if what we did actually works. So we've got how many players? Let's just do two for now. So for player one, your hand there we go, we've got numbers one through five, and we've got some cards. And it's a yellow reverse right now. What card do you wanna play? Well, I do have a wild, so it correctly said that I can play a card, because I can play a wild. So let's play three. And now we played a wild, and now it says player two. Maybe before we go to there, we should also have it show us which card they played. Let's do a print. You played that dot format players player turn. 
card chosen minus one. That way, we also show what card you played. Let's also do print an empty line there, just so that we can separate, because I don't like having it say player two right there. There, let's try that again. So I'm gonna go two players, player one's turn, your hand, there we go. It's a yellow six on, on the top, which means I can play because I have a wild. So I'm gonna play that. You played a wild draw four. Perfect. Your hand, it's a wild draw four. And um, they, so obviously we need to put in there that you get to pick what color it is. But, you know, let's just continue on. So let's say they played a yellow six. Oh, and now we've got an error. Ah, of course, because what did we do? We increased player turn by one, even though we don't have three players. So um, what we should be doing is having it loop back around. All right. So after we increase player turn by play direction, let's check if player turn, because at that point, what was player turn? Player turn was equal to two. And that gives us an error because the highest index number of players is one. Now we did ask, well, how many players? So we've got, we still have this variable num players. Right, so let's go here. If player turn is equal to num players, then let's loop it back around to become zero. All right, so let's make player turn equal to zero. And I'm thinking, what if we're going in the opposite direction? You know what? Let's account for that right now. Else, if player turn uh, is equal to, or maybe is less than zero, it will be negative one in this case. Then let's make player turn equal to num players minus one. Again, subtracting one to account for that index number. Just before I go, let's double check this again. So if we go with two players, there's a red skip. They can play a red six or a seven. Let's just see if it's actually that, that checking works. So what if I try to play one? Yeah, it's not valid, not valid. So let's do a five. Perfect, I played a red seven. Now, there's a red seven. Perfect. They've got a red nine and they've got a wild. Let's play... Uh, red nine. So now there's a red nine. Other players turn. It's player one's turn again. Hey, it seems like it's working. If I try to play a one, not valid. Four, it's a red six. Maybe I'll play a wild draw four. Now it says you can't play because they had to, um, because they had a wild now yeah so here's a problem color we haven't we need to add in that feature but I'll do that in the next video where we specify what the color is so that's it for this video part two I know it's been a long one uh, look for the second, um, the next part where we add in the features of the different cards. Thanks, guys. See you later.